Are you now repeating the same life story of your mother, your aunt, your sister, your grandmother, great-grandmother? My heart goes to you and I hope that this video is the first step for you to start writing a completely different story. The story of my family was that every single woman in my lineage was abandoned. Divorces galore. So I said, from very young age, I don't want to be living that way. I am going to give myself the financial independence so that no man abandons me. I pay for my own life. And so I did. I went and studied, studied, uh, got, you know, a fantastic job after a fantastic job. I got the beautiful car, the wonderful paycheck. <laughs> of course, there was no boyfriend, there was no husband, because nobody was good enough for me. Was not good enough for me because I was so intelligent and arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, behind that intelligence and arrogance, there was a big, big, big fear, terrifying fear, that then that guy will abandon me, just like the curse of my family. So I decided that instead of leaving the curse of my family, I will just live by myself for the rest of my life. Ah, oh, I laugh a little, but I can tell you that that was very painful. Very painful to arrive to 30-something of age and not having a child, not having a boyfriend, not having a family, not having even a plant or a cat. It was just my job. Even if I had a very good job, which I had lovely colleagues, beautiful car, but I was in reality quite miserable. What did I do? The magical moment when my transformation started was when my boyfriend at that time told me, Blanca, I don't love you, and you deserve somebody who does. Well, that was shocking to me because I didn't realize that even with my great career, with my beautiful CV and my fantastic bank account, I didn't believe that I deserve love. I didn't believe that anywhere in the planet there was a man who could love me. Me? Mrs. Imperfect? Mrs. Horrible Family? Who? Totally unlovable. But he told me you know, you deserve somebody who will love you. And this opened something in my psyche that let hope enter into my heart. And that, those key words started a journey of transformation. A wonderful friend of mine appeared. It was a lady, I think she was in her 70s at that time who was a young nun in the 60s in California where Joseph Campbell started writing The Hero's Journey. She gifted it to me. She read with me the books of Owning Your Own Shadow. She, he, we. And this was really the beginning of my journey of awakening to the fact that you, me, everybody lives stories. Stories. We repeat the stories that are familiar to us. We repeat the story of our parents, we repeat the story of our family of origin, of the religion, that uh, the country that uh, where we were born professors. We just repeat stories. And stories, the stories are very, very common. 
very, they are consistent all over the world. I was so ashamed that my family was that way, that we couldn't sustain intimate relationships. And as you know, I am Mexican living in the Netherlands. And I thought it was a Mexican thing because, honestly, looking around in Mexico, many people are that way. There are quite a bit of divorces. But uh, when I left Mexico, I started connecting with all these international people and I started talking to the Americans and the Germans and, uh, and they started telling me, well, <laughs> the dissolution of the family uh, unit is just increasing tremendously. More and more divorces, more and more women just like you. Women who cannot go deep into allowing this receivership, into allowing their feminine nature to welcome that healthy love. I was shocked because sincerely I thought that it was little of me. I thought that it was my family. I thought it was Mexico. But this is extended left, right and center. And let me know in the comments if that's true. If you have seen left, right and center women longing for love. Especially, you know, especially I notice that the intelligent ones are the ones that are longing the most, longing for love the most. Why? Because if you are an intelligent girl, there is a world there open for you. If you get your PhD, if you study your languages, you get that fantastic job with that fantastic money. So then you go and do it. You don't depend from a man. Of course, you can open your business because you are intelligent. And then what happens is loneliness. What happens is there's no man who is good enough for you. So how can we change this story? We need to change the story that we are telling ourselves within. Let me tell you a story. I was a mother when I was almost 41, uh, for the second time when I was 43. And the one investment I made at the time was incredibly good. I studied hypnobirthing. And during the first moment when I felt anything, until the birth of the child, I was hypnotizing myself to saying I am writing a new story. This birth is going to be beautiful because it's the story that I choose to have. And I just repeat mantras very similar to this again and again and again. And I can tell you both children they were born in this apartment in the other room. <laughs> no anesthesia, no pain. Even ecstasy, I could say. I will link uh, uh, below the videos where I tell those stories. Because you see, quite some years have passed. Both of those children are already in high school. <laughs> Time goes so fast. But I can tell you that in this life and that situation, to change the story that I was telling myself, change the process and the outcome. So you can do exactly the same. Now I'm going to share with you four stories that keep you small, alone, repeating the same patterns of your family, repeating the same patterns of your culture. And I want to leave you with the hope that you can change these patterns. Why you can change these patterns? Because you are here in this video. You have interest in changing them. And what do I mean by that? When one has an intention, when one has a dream, when one has a question, the universe conspires for you to get what you are wanting. Yes, so you will heal this story. You will be the cycle breaker in your family who will, for the first time, be able to receive love and enjoy money and your children and health. You really, you really can have it all.
even if they say that that's not possible, even if you see evidence that that is not possible. Because what is what is having it all? It's like going to a buffet of many, many things that life can give to you. And you have a plate, you're 24 hours. And in this plate of 24 hours, you put what you want. Caviar? <laughs> what do you want? Ah, quesadilla. <laughs> what is what you want? Everybody serves, serves in his care of plate what they want. So that is what is having it all, making choices. And knowing the restrictions of your 24 hours, knowing the restrictions of the season of your life, knowing the restrictions of your plate. But still, that is having it all. Right now, my family is not at home. I'm filming this video by myself in my living room. There's no husband, there is no children, there is no exercise or food, and still I have it all. You see, it's a question of the story that I tell myself. From being in my creative endeavor to being lonely, it is what I tell myself that is. And that is what is. The story that we tell ourselves. So, first story, the story that keeps you small. The, the four stories that I want to share with you are more or less aligned with your body, with your chakras, going from the bottom to the top. The first one is the crown chakra, the chakra of existence, the chakra of the basis of the, the feet of your life, the grounding, your existence, the be feeling safe. And that's the story of I don't exist. This story is created in childhood. It is created when your parents didn't notice you. When your parents were just way too busy doing something else. Definitely I had that wound or that story. My, father, my mother was depressed for a long time and she was busy being depressed. She was in bed. So what to do if your mother doesn't see you? You act out. So what did I do? I tried to be the best student possible at school. What to prove the fact that I was there, that I actually existed. So this story, it is healed with the realization, a very deep spiritual realization, that you are. And is, this is deeply connected with your mother. This is deeply connected with what is called the mother wound. If your mother was super attentive, really asphyxiated, that you want to say no, if your mother was not available so that you get the inner resources and you hug yourself. This is the process to transform this story, to say I am. And I may say no, and I don't need external validation. This is so big. When you heal this, when you change this story from I don't exist to I am, you're tremendously powerful. You will be shocked at the things that you will manifest. I love to equate the outcome of this healing to fertile ground. You feel both earth, very fertile, very productive, and water very flowy, very flexible. When you move from I don't exist to I am, you are magnetic. You are creating just like the plant. So oh, you just grow and boom, a flower, boom, a fruit. You will be shocked that effortlessly 
you will be called to do projects very well paid, you will be called to uh, go for dinner with this absolutely handsome man, you will be called and this fertile ground is just delightful to be. So how are you liking it? Is this rocking your world and opening you to new possibilities? Please show me that you like it. Like it and subscribe. The story number two is about I am not lovable. I am not lovable is, again, very linked to the mom. It's a feeling of I did something wrong. Because I did something wrong, I am not loved. And this is, you know, the anxious attachment that we show about all women. Please don't leave me the fear of abandonment that many of us have. So please leave me this clinging because I am not lovable, please love me. And this is what I described to you with that boyfriend when he told me, you deserve somebody who loves you like a, is that possible? Does that even exist? So when you switch from I'm not lovable to, indeed, I am love. I, I produce love and welcome love. Your life absolutely changes. You change the relationships you have with other women, with your children. You change the relationships that you have with you know, the dates that you may attract. Complete different men you will attract. Uh, men who are really embodying that healthy, masculine power. I really love this idea of the, the men, like the story in Belle and the Beast. And the Beast. Uh, you have the crazy people of the town, they are in love with Bella. You have the arrogant, narcissistic guy who wants to have her, possess her, control her. And you have the Beast, who is really ugly and who's traumatized, but is her best bet because he's a man who will be capable to defend her and yet love her. When a, 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 a rough exterior and with a soft inner side. And this is just possible to attract when you remember, when you embody the story that you are loved. Story number three, the story of I am not good enough. The story of I am not good enough is big. This is related about action. I'm not good enough in what I say, in what I do. It's, my God, I just see it so often. As, as I said before, with these intelligent women, they just go for another diploma and another diploma and another diploma and there is no other diploma and it's just continuous, continue, continue, even addiction. I invite you to start reframing this I'm not good enough with I am enough. I have everything that I need right now. Life is perfect, really, right now. When you fall into the perfection of how things are and how you are, you will act very differently. Because instead of thinking of how they are, you are perceived and how you are complimented for what you are doing, you are just acting. You are just flowing. The moment when we get rid of it, I'm not good enough. When we live a different story, the story of enough, you become wealthy, you become in flow, you become magnetic. This is powerful. And the fourth story is the story that is all the way to the crown of our head, and that is I am bad. There is a difference between I am not good enough and I am bad. I am bad cuts deeper. I'm not good enough is, you know, like I, ha I, want, I have the hope 
that I, you know, there could be something that will make me acceptable. But the I am bad is more profound. It's related to your identity. It's connected with the feeling of shame. That you, as a person, as an individual person, you should be ashamed of yourself. This story is very old. It's the story of the witches. It's the story of all the women who have been abused, uh, felt absolutely dirty after being abused. It's all the women who also acted that, that trauma by being promiscuous themselves. Is this badness that is so filthy in your soul that you think it's not possible to get rid of it? The only balm that can heal this is self-forgiveness. You can achieve this self-forgiveness when you have changed the other three stories. Because imagine if you feel if you feel that you exist, you feel grounded, if you feel lovable, if you feel enough, you can get closer to the belief that you are good. Even if you made many mistakes, even if you come from a family that you are not proud of, even if fill in the blank. Because all those things are part of the human experience. And you are indeed creating a new story. So I want you to imagine who would you be if you actually were living the story of I am? Who would you be if you were living the story of I am? lovable. I am enough. And more exciting, I am good. If you go lack to change the story that you are living from blah to wow, come and join us. Rebuild Your Radiance is a program that I run twice a year. Join us in the next iteration. I run it every fall and every spring. If you happen to have missed the time slot, there will be a waiting list form so that I can keep you informed next time I open the door. And if serendipity is actually working, I feel you will join us in the next cohort because you see, we need women who are completely radiant from the inside out, who are living the story of the woman who is indeed open to receive in an easy and magnetic and regenerative way. I hope to see you there and thank you very much.